Hi folks, this video is a short walk around and description of my 1997 Suzuki Sidekick that I have converted to an electric vehicle. Um, this vehicle I bought, uh, it's been well over two years ago now, uh, for $700. It was uh, running at the time, and actually the gentleman I bought it from had intended to do a lot of work to it, and had started doing a lot of work to it, to make it sort of an economical 4x4 uh, commuter vehicle. But uh, after multiple attempts at replacing the head gasket, he could never get uh, a, a head gasket leak fixed, or maybe the head was cracked, I'm not even sure. Um, but in any case, um, after I bought it from him, I got it for $700. Uh, I drove it for a little while just to make sure that all the other parts were still working well. Uh, and after I was satisfied that they were, uh, in the fall of 2018, I suppose, uh, I pulled that faulty engine out and started the electric conversion process. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some of the basics on this vehicle and uh, let you see what, what I've done. Uh, so we'll get started here under the hood to begin with. That's what everyone is really interested in. So, hang on just a moment. Under the hood, the first thing you notice is a lot of batteries. And of course, batteries are the heart of any EV. Uh, in this case, we're using uh, some reconfigured and repurposed uh, used Chevy Volt batteries. Uh, I won't go into all the details of why I chose those, uh, but I was able to get them for uh, a very, very good price. I believe uh, I got, it's nominally 20 kilowatt hours total. I've got three banks in here under the hood and one back under the, uh, the back end where the gas tank was. Uh, but for those 20 kilowatt hours, I paid right around $3,000 total. Now, I'm not getting 20 kilowatt hours of capacity out of them for several reasons, most of them by choice. Um, but I don't think you can buy a brand new lead acid for that price. So it was a very economical way to get started in this project uh, and get a reasonable amount of power uh, capacity into it. Um, the motor and controller, of course, the, the other main components uh, for any EV. You can see the controller mounted right back there on the uh, firewall. This system is the NetGain Hyper 9 IS system. That's, uh, this one is the 100 volt version, nominal. Uh, my battery packs are actually uh, nominally 120 volt, and this NetGain Hyper 9 IS is good to up to 132. So. Um, the Hyper 9 is, uh, after I did some research, I determined, I, in my opinion, it's the, the latest and greatest for do-it-yourself do EVers. Uh, it's an AC system, uh, very compact uh, controller, as you can see there. The motor itself is pretty tough to see in this installation. There's not a lot of light in here. I'm going to go ahead and try You can see the back end of the motor just right down in there. And what you'll notice is it's right up in the transmission tunnel. And that's because I actually deleted the transmission in this installation. Uh, this is a four-wheel drive vehicle. It still is four-wheel drive. I maintain four-wheel drive capability. Let me see if we can see the motor from the other side here any better. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, there's some wires in the way, of course. Uh, but the motor is directly coupled to the uh, transfer case in this vehicle. And I had to make a, a custom coupler for that. Uh, I actually built that, uh, or designed it, and 3D printed it in plastic first to mock up the, uh, the mating uh, bolt pattern and everything, and then uh, took that, that prototype coupler to a machine shop and had one turned out of steel and welded. Uh, I actually took the output shaft from the original transmission and had the machinist weld that into that coupler so that it uh, would then mate right into the existing transfer case. Um, also under the hood, uh, not a whole lot happening other than the very basics. I tried to keep this installation as simple as possible. Um, we do have a vacuum pump here. 
with a pretty large vacuum reservoir. Both of those are used parts from other uh, production EVs um, purchased through an EV parts supplier. Uh, and then that, of course, uh, it's set on a vacuum switch to make sure that the brake booster has vacuum at all times. And that works just fine. I haven't had any trouble with that whatsoever. Um, uh, one thing I did have to make a small modification with uh, shortly after I got it running, uh, which was this past summer, of course, in the hottest time of the summer. But uh, I found that the, the controller, even with the, the heat sink plate, which is finned on the back side, you can't really see until I get on the side here, but that heat sink plate has aluminum fins. Even with that up against the firewall like that in hot weather, the uh, controller was starting to approach its, uh, its temperature rating maximum. Uh, so I bought a, uh, a 12 volt boat bilge blower and some ducting and just uh, directed that at the back side of that heat sink to try and help cool down uh, the controller. And that's actually on a, a it's on a signal from the controller based on its temperature when it, when it starts and stops that, uh, that blower. My uh, contactor box is uh, another very low budget item. It's just a plastic storage container with some, uh, some thicker plastic lining the inside of it to help uh, strengthen it up. Uh, got the main uh, maintenance cutoff switch here on top. And then my main contactor and several other uh, high voltage relays are inside there uh, that control the, the power to the DC to DC converter and the, uh, the heater and things like that. DC DC is right up here on the firewall as well. Uh, that's a pretty basic unit. Uh, purchased that from uh, Thunderstruck Motors. Uh, replaced the main uh, large 12 volt battery, the starting battery with a much smaller one. This is like something you'd find in a Power Wheels car or uh, uh, something of that sort. Didn't need near the capacity of you know, big heavy cranking amps from a big heavy battery, so just decided to lighten that up a little bit. Um, and this, this area right here is, is a big, uh, what I call my poor man's BMS. It's a, it's a manual battery monitoring system. And the way these Chevy Volt batteries are built, uh, they come in six or 12 cell modules. And after some testing with the ones I purchased, I found out that uh, the, within each six cell module, the cells are matched almost perfectly. You just never see any variation within each six cell module. So I ran wiring from every sixth cell in each of my banks of, of uh, batteries into this little junction point here and I can manually test for balance uh, across each 24 volt, which is six cell uh, module section. And so far uh, I have found running this thing around and I haven't deep cycled them beyond about 40%. And I don't plan to, to pull them down much lower than that. Uh, but so far everything has re remained virtually perfectly balanced. I have not had any uh, battery imbalance issues whatsoever. Um, it doesn't, it does still need a bumper. Uh, I'm planning on building a simple, uh, plate steel bumper. Uh, the, the original bumper, uh, one of the bolts broke and, uh, I just got rid of it when I was, uh, getting rid of all the, the IC engine parts and accessories, uh, because I atten originally intended to put a tow bar on this thing because I assumed that I would need to be towing it around a bunch because I'd be having problems with it. So far, that hasn't been the case, but in any, any case, it needs a new bumper. Um, not too consequential, but I will get there. Uh, otherwise, exterior is very much stock. I uh, did replace the automatic locking hubs with uh, manual locking hubs just to make sure that uh, it would freewheel when I told it to, so we didn't waste energy spinning the front axle when we don't need it. Um, the charger, let me go ahead and open up so you can see. I did mount the charger in the rear end. Uh, there wasn't a lot of room under the hood, and this is where the uh, the, the plug is. I'll show you that momentarily. Uh, this is another Thunderstruck Motors item. I believe it's the TSM 2500. Uh, currently, I've just got it set up to charge off 110. Um, it, it charges at about uh, 1500 watts or so. 
uh, which for my purposes is plenty. I just don't drive this thing for super long distances. Uh, so most of my trips, I'm recharged within anywhere from one to four hours. The uh, charge port just happened to fit perfectly into the existing gas door. And you'll see that is a standard J1772 charge port. And I just purchased a little uh, charger cable kit from, uh, I believe this one came from Thunderstruck Motors as well. Um, I think someone else manufactures it, but in any case, it just plugs into a 110 outlet and then you get a J1772 connector and you get some stats on the little screen here. If it's powered up, it would show uh, how much power it used in the last charge and uh, some things like that. Let's go ahead and put the hood down so we get plenty of light inside. Okay, and I'll show you the interior real quick. Again, tried to make or keep the modifications to a minimum. Um, I did end up installing an electric heater element, replacing the, the liquid heating system, uh, which involved completely removing the entire dashboard uh, to get into the heater core and replace that heater core with a standard uh, 120 volt ceramic uh, basically space heater element out of an old space heater I had um, because my battery system is 120 volt and a, a heater element doesn't really care whether it sees AC or DC uh, that just worked out really well um, it was a big job to remove the dash and replace everything or put everything back afterward but uh, I think it was worth it so the uh, Hyper 9 IS system comes with a display you can hear my vacuum pump this little display right here and there's a lot of things you can program in the hyper 9 is it's it's very uh, adaptable so I, I connect to it with my computer and i can program all sorts of different things about the drive modes and the, the regen and even um, a battery uh, capacity curve so i get a little battery uh, status indicator here. It's got uh, speed and odometer on it, which again are programmed based on motor RPM. And remember, I, I don't have a transmission, so uh, as long as my transfer case is in high range, um, motor speed is a direct indicator of, of road speed uh, because there's only one, one gear. Uh, this vehicle has a five and a quarter to one final drive ratio at the axles, so uh, it's a low enough gearing that for most circumstances, uh, the, the straight through one-to-one -one gearing in the transfer case is fine. However, it is a two-speed transfer case, and I replaced the, uh, the a couple pieces of the internals of the transfer case and the shifter with this twin stick kit. So I have one stick for, uh, this is actually in low range at the moment, or neutral or high range. And you, you do have to stop to make that, that gear change, but uh, that gives me two gear ranges depending on whether I'm driving slow on hills or whether I'm just out on the road. And then, of course, four-wheel drive is controlled independently. So my low and high range can be done in either four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive, and then I can just shift into four-wheel drive as needed. Um, this was where the original manual transmission shifter was. I replaced that with a... a pretty shiny aluminum plate. Uh, I have a, several switches here. One is of course uh, forward, stop, and reverse. Uh, I, when I ordered this switch I thought it was going to be something big enough to grab in my hand and when I got it it's just big enough to grab with my fingers though I kind of laughed about that but it actually works pretty well. Um, this knob here is a uh, uh, 4 to 20 or excuse me uh, 0 to 5 volt uh, potentiometer that goes to the uh, brake signal. A, a lot of people will put a, a brake pressure transducer in so that when they hit the brake pedal, uh, regen uh, is proportional to braking. But I wanted to be able to do regen without any brake application because we have a lot of steep uh, up and downhill uh, roads around here and I wanted to be able to do regen uh, and control the regen on downhills with no braking. So as you turn this dial here, regen 
increases uh, with the numbers. And I found that uh, even at about half regen, this thing will hold itself to a very low speed going down the steepest hills we have around here. And then this is just the heater control here. Um, this The heater is only active if the fan is on. I wired it that way so that uh, we can't overheat the, the heating element without the, the 12 volt blower fan running. But um, there's two settings and this is the same switch that came off of that original, uh, the old space heater. So it, it has a fan only setting that doesn't do anything but in the low and high heat. Um, the heater is only about 1500 watts, so it's not enough to uh, make it really warm in here, but it's enough to, to make it livable and also help uh, eliminate frost in the winter. Um, the speedometer still works. It's a mechanical speedometer in this vehicle, so uh, that's still connected to the transfer case and works just fine. Uh, all the rest of the gauge cluster is, is no longer active, but some of the indicator lights in the gauge cluster still do work just fine. Um, the ABS light is on, unfortunately. I lost ABS somewhere in the process of removing and replacing the dash. Uh, some, some wire came loose or something, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, I think that covers most of it. Uh, there's a lot more details and a lot more things I could tell, tell you about this little vehicle. Um, testing so far has proven it really, really capable. Uh, it just works well. Uh, battery capacity, like I said, hasn't been quite what I hoped. I don't, I certainly am not getting the uh, 20 kilowatt hours out of this, this pack that I hoped. Um, the longest drive I've taken it on so far is about 18 miles and I feel like I used, like I said, about 60% of the battery capacity doing that. Um, but that was uh, several big accelerations up to 50 miles per hour. Um, the highest speed limits around here are about 50. A lot of the roads around here are about 35 miles per hour and that's perfect for this little vehicle. Um, so anyway, I think I'll cut this off now. It's getting long enough already. If you're interested in hearing more about details of how this thing was built and how I designed it, uh, the conversion, uh, or how it's running or any of that, just let me know in the comments and I might make some more videos about it. We'll just have to see. Thanks. Have a good day.